What's up guys? So today I'm super ecstatic to be reviewing the sneaker I have in hand, especially with the rising popularity of the Netflix documentary The Last Dance that revolves around one of the greatest basketball players of all time, Michael Jordan, and his last days of being part of the mythical Chicago Bulls team. It's a sneaker that I've been on the hunt for for a very very long time, even back to when I was in high school. But before I get into the review, I gotta give a shout out to my favorite sneaker shop here in the Philippines, Cop Garden. You've heard of them from me before, from my Yeezy 350B2 Beluga review. My brother Andrew and I have cop more than one sneaker grill from them at awesome prices, including this shoe. And really just coming over, talking shop with Adrian, Carlo, and the rest of the crew, it really is one of my favorite places to be as a sneakerhead. So again, big thank you to Cop Garden and Adrian for helping me once again add another sneaker grill to my collection. Definitely go check them out in store after quarantine or online on their Instagram and website. I'll leave the links in the description down below. Guys, I'm super excited for this one. So finally, without further ado, let's jump into my review, my first impressions, and my honest opinions on the Nike Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG Chicago 2015. So I have in hand one of the most historic and notorious sneaker silhouettes and colorways of all time, the Nike Air Jordan 1 Chicago. This sneaker first released in 1985 as a way for Jordan and Nike to stop getting fined $5,000 per game. It's believed that Jordan first started wearing the Nike Airship in black and red or as we know it now, the bread colorway, which went against the uniformity of uniform rules of the NBA. The rule states that the players must wear the same colored shoes as the uniforms of the team, hence the Jordan 1 bread colorways also being known as the band colorway. If it wasn't for that said ruling and controversy, who knows if we would have this beautiful sneaker colorway today, along with the other retros and variations that followed it throughout the years. Jumping right into the sneaker, you have the overall silhouette of the Air Jordan 1 that's very similar to the Nike Dunk because it was designed by the same person, Peter Moore. Of course, you have the upper in this high quality leather and the white and red color blocking with accents of black on the Nike swooshes on both sides, the ankle collar, the sock liner, the laces, and the iconic Wings logo on the lateral side, which was also designed by Peter Moore. At the top of the padded tongue, you have the classic Nike Air logo, just like the OG pair in 1985. The shoe also comes with an extra pair of white and red laces. And lastly, you have the white rubber midsole and the red rubber outsole with the Nike logo in the center. Now please note I did go up a full size with this shoe. I have a size 13 in hand but I usually wear a size 12 in all of my shoes. This is because number one, this was the only size available at Cop Garden. And number two, I have wide feet so going true to size is a no-go for me. I used to have a pair of Air Jordan 1 breads but I bought those in true to size and they hurt like hell after a few hours of wearing them. Full disclosure though, I do kind of regret selling those consigning them at Cop Garden actually. But now it's full circle and I ended up with these beauties down the line. So if you're wide footed like me, I do recommend going up half a size for Jordan 1s. On feet though, this shoe does feel great. Jordan 1s aren't known for being the most comfortable shoe in the world, but even so, just wearing this shoe, the overall aura just makes you feel amazing. Now for my thoughts and honest opinions on the shoe, and man, where do I begin? This is about a 12 year journey for me, even before I could call myself a sneakerhead. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't a big Bulls fan when they were at their peak, nor was I even a basketball fan back then. But even with that fact, it was hard not to know who Michael Jordan was. From Space Jam to the Gatorade commercials to the NBA 2K game, the news, he was everywhere. But the first time I ever saw the Jordan 1 in the Chicago colorway was actually on the feet of my high school's dance troupe when they all rocked the Nike Jordan 1 Chicago in patent leather back in 2008. Like I said, I wasn't a sneakerhead. I really didn't even care about sneakers back then. But when I saw them for the first time, I was like, Damn, I need a pair of those. Fast forward to 2020, The Last Dance is on Netflix, and on episode 5, Jordan pulls out the 1994 retros for the first time for his last game in Madison Square Garden. I already had a hunch that the prices of Jordans in general would go up after this documentary, but just because of that episode, this silhouette and this specific colorway went through the roof. That's when I remembered from all the times that I've been there, Cop Garden had a pair of Air Jordan 1 Chicago's size 13 2015 release 
at an awesome price. Every time I'm there, I always make sure to check out the shoe. I look at it, I admire it, I hold it in hand, and I think, is this the day I'm gonna pull the trigger? And usually it's not. I put it back on shelf and then I move on with my day. But that night when I watched the episode, I would have DM'd Adrian immediately if it wasn't rude to blow up his messages at two o'clock in the morning. So the very next day with fingers crossed, I DM'd Adrian, lo and behold, lady luck was shining upon me when he told me the sneaker was still available. If I had waited for quarantine to be over to go to the cop garden and pick up the shoe myself, who knows if I would be able to grab the shoe, especially with how crazy the prices are now. Thank God I pulled the trigger, I have them here now, and I don't regret it one bit. It's funny too because I bought the breads a few years ago for my birthday and now I'm sitting here with the Chicago colorway which just so happens to be my 28th birthday gift to myself. Now some of you guys might not know this but this isn't the first remake of the original from 1985. As I mentioned before, it came out in 1994. It would be cool to have a pair from 1994 or even a pair from 1985 but we can all imagine how crazy those prices are right now. But if you think about it, this pair is actually the most wearable of the three that released. Because as you know with my sneakers, I rock, I don't stock. What's even more interesting to me is that this specific release is not only a retro but an OG as well. Retro usually means it's a mass produced remake or variation of the sneaker with lower quality materials such as the ones that released in 2013. But since the shoe is an OG, that means the look, the materials, and the overall shoe is of much higher quality and is as close to the original that came out in 1985. Possibly because 2015 marks the 20 year anniversary of the shoe's release. The only difference that I've seen personally is that the heel of the shoe curves versus it being straight like on the 1985 and the 1994 pair. Other than that, this is as close to the OG as you can get. Even the box is the same as the original versus the 1994 box which had a new updated Jordan design. But in my case, honestly, I really don't care much. This pair is in immaculate condition, quality is top notch, and I'm above and beyond grateful just to be able to have this pair. This is the fastest that I've written the script, recorded, edited, and released the sneaker review just because I was super excited to share the pure bliss I had with you guys for having the shoe in hand. Most of my collection revolves around the story of a sneaker and really the story of the Air Jordan 1 Chicago, what the name Air Jordan stands for, and the legacy that it's paved way to. It honestly can't get any better than this. This may be the only Jordan 1 in my collection but it definitely goes down in history as one of the greatest of all time. And that is it for this video. Again, thank you Cop Garden, thank you Adrian for once again helping me add another sneaker grail to my collection. Leave a like on this video if you guys like it, that's what the like button's for. And leave a comment down below, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that the Chicago colorway is the greatest colorway of all time or the greatest sneaker of all time? Do you guys have other colorways in mind? Leave a comment down below, I love conversing with you guys there. Follow me on Instagram at Albi Peralta. I'm a bit more personal there and I release my sneakers there way before I release them here on YouTube. I post my family there, my pets there, my travels, and I post stories almost every day. So do give me a follow there. Subscribe to my channel if you guys want to see more. Check out my other videos on my channel. I have a bunch of new videos there. I have gameplay videos with my brothers. I have travel vlogs, personal vlogs, more sneaker reviews. Anything and everything in between will be on my channel. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys when I see you. Bye guys. Yeah, 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 yeah